What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification button. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. That way, can you become a prize whenever great information is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods? I'm just coming in calm, cold, collective, because I know it was a smash with the Tyrese Halliburton assist prop. That is something. If you want to know why you want to be a part of that premium Discord, I, I don't jump in there every single time after I get done recording this video. But I ended up researching for a couple hours afterwards. Didn't have my best day, obviously, on Wednesday. But Thursday, walked into a gold mine. Seven and a half assists was the opening number for Tyrese Halliburton. That was not available when I recorded that evening. But dropped it down in the premium Discord. My heaviest bet on a single play of the entire season. And it came through in the first half. Closed at eight and a half with a major juice on the over as well. It was like people didn't realize that he was going to play his entire allotment of minutes. But again... Just saying, it's only one play, but it was one play that salvaged a lot of other bad plays along the way here this week. And, well, we're looking pretty good with Minnesota, looking pretty good here. Uh, with Dallas, things are really good. The trade deadline worked in our favor, if you watch this program, on uh, Wednesday evening, Thursday morning. Good stuff, good stuff. But, of course, we're here to talk Friday slate, just six games in the association. The dust is settled. We'll talk about a couple of those trades here for sure. Producer Jacob, hi. We're, we'll talk Super Bowl tomorrow. Make sure you guys check out, check out NFL Lindy's. That'll be coming down the pipeline as well for the Super Bowl. Crazy to think it's the final game of the season, but here we are, friends. Anywho, NBA, it's NBA time. Let's get to the picks. Our boarding walk begins here with Atlanta minus four going up against Philly. They did what everybody expected and kept DeJounte Murray. What are we doing? What, what are we doing if we're the Atlanta Hawks? You scratched him. You couldn't find a dance partner. And well, you just. I have no idea. Some Eastern Conference teams did some mind blowing things, keeping certain guys and some teams unloaded their entire roster, turned it over entirely like a Detroit. And that's fine by them. Uh, and then there's teams that got better in the East. Very, very many of them. That was a weird way of saying that. Uh, the Pat, Pat Beverly trade made no sense to me. Obviously, but you know what? Why don't we just start down the line talking through a lot of the main things? Because I do have a notepad that I take notes on. Patrick Beverly, Royce O'Neal ends up going to Phoenix. Interesting. P.J. Washington to Dallas for Seth Curry, Grant Williams at a first round pick. Dennis Schroeder, he ends up flip-flopping with Dinwiddie. They're going to get rid of Dinwiddie. You've got Alec Burks. He got traded for Quentin Grimes. What a weird one that is. Going back, join Tibbs. Tibbs has his dance partners. Hey, Taj Gibbs is starting a second half of basketball right now. Gordon Hayward, da Davis Batons, Trey Mann, what's happening with that one? Uh, have fun with them, Charlotte. Kelly Olenek, he's going to be playing basketball here. Ochai Baji as well for Toronto. And then lastly, Buddy Heald for Marcus Morris, Furkan Korkmaz. All right, cool, good talk. Anyway, I don't think anybody's going to be playing there on the Philadelphia 76er side, but they're going to be a little bit shorthanded for this basketball game, no doubt about it. You've got Tyrese Maxey, Kelly Oubre, Tobias Harris, Paul Reed, and... They will hopefully say Buddy Heald, but more than likely, it'll be Kenyon Martin. Hey, that's another Ricky Martin guy. Campaign's no, well, he won't be there yet. No Patrick Beverly. This is a weird spot. Really weird spot. And Atlanta, we've seen this configuration for them. 15-36-0, though, against the spread. That's with a lot of Murray and a lot of young in your life, so that's not ideal. DeAndre Hunter continuing to play more and more minutes, but... This is one of those spots where I kind of want to see where everybody's active if they're not. Again, it's not even necessarily that I think the line's going to change. It's just that I don't want to invest in it unless I knew for sure that it was a shorthanded 76er side. And as such, I think if anybody plays here, you're leaning towards the Philadelphia plus four. But again, I have no interest in betting this basketball game more than anything. Philly's been 29-21 and zero against the spread. Guess what? A majority of those... With that Joel Embiid character, he's going to be out for a very, very long time, if not the entire year. We'll find out. But Philly plus four, let's go to the next game. Not a whole heck of a lot better here. Washington, Boston, and, uh, well, trade significance there. You got Jaden Springer that somehow became a Boston Celtic. Again, what? The 76er stuff made a little to no sense. Jaden Springer can play some defense. Like, this guy can get down, get his eagle on, just go nuts on somebody, but... You've, of course, got a questionable tag next to Jason Tatum for being sick, rumbling his tumbly. Drew Holiday will be back. And again, I'm just looking at some of the opening numbers, which is kind of what we'll get into for the analysis. But this is another one that's just so hard to bet. Boston, 
going to be double digit favorites at home against a lot of teams, especially when they're as tor- terrible and, and putrid as this Washington Wizards team. Now they have Patrick Baldwin, who's actually estimated to start here at the moment. That is just a wild, wild run out. Rashawn Holmes now plays for that basketball team as well. Like, I don't even know what to say. You got Marvin Bagley dinged up. You got just what are we even doing here, people? What are we doing? Anyway. Xavier Tillman also new Boston Celtic for anybody who cared. This game is horrible to bet, but I will say Tyus Jones, 11 and a half points. Jason Tatum, if he ends up playing at 27 and a half, this is a Washington team that plays up, up, up in pace. And it's not that Boston doesn't necessarily go up and down the floor. It's just that they're really, really good at defense. And they're really, really good here at, at offense as well. So again, 17 in pace. It's not like they're flying. But yeah, you get that Washington upgrade. Tyus Jones. I don't really know leans for both of them over 11 and a half points Tatum over 27 and a half a lot would have to change here we'd have to see some interesting props but again Tatum news maybe you just want to take some random shots on Boston guys and hope he sits but not going to be my plan on Friday after you know a, a redemption day for sure on Thursday we go from redemption to opportunity my friends what is on your screen here oh you go to Odd Shopper, you retweet this tweet that is tagged at the top of the page at oddshopper.com. Well, it's not, it's at Odd Shopper on X. You correctly guess the final score in the replies below. You could do that down here as well in the comment section, and you can win one free year of Odd Shopper Premium. What an unbelievable deal. $50 for an entire month. You think about that, multiply that out by 12. Quick math, anyone, $600 value. I, I did the math for you. Repost it. Correctly guess the final score. Win a year of Odd Chopper Premium. Sound great? Sounds good to me, too. Uh, Yeah, retweet that. That's all. Back to the picks we go. Houston taking on Toronto. Toronto, they were busy bodies there, but doesn't really change the complexion of their team too much. They end up standing pat with Bruce Brown. The Igbaji thing, the Kelly Olenek thing, the Jonte Porter thing, we're going to be waiting on that for a game. Doesn't change the complexion of it for Friday. And it doesn't change who we expect to be the starters here going forward. Once they got Jakob Pertl back, Thad Young, he was a casualty of the day as well. So is what it is. We'll see if he even suits up for Brooklyn. Well, there's going to be some interesting stuff that happens here the rest of the way. A lot of vets that can get dropped, the mid-level exception rules, lots of different things. Come playoff time, we're going to try to take advantage of a couple of pieces of news there where maybe there's certain guys that Again, part of it is that Brooklyn is a team that fundamentally won't be there come the end of the year. It just is the way it is. It's been a lost season, but a guy like Thad Young, does he end up staying there? Doesn't he? Because he'd be great for 12, 14 minutes a game on a contender. You just don't want him playing anymore at this stage of his career. Anywho, let's talk Houston. Let's talk Toronto. And speaking of uh, this Toronto side, they are really bad at defense lately. Worst in the entire NBA the last four games in defensive rating. How is that even possible when you have somebody as long, lanky, and, and good of a two-way player as what you have Mr. Scotty Barnes to be? And Emmanuel quickly is having the worst defensive season of his career, bar none. Part of that is since being with Toronto, more offensive responsibilities, more that he's having to get done there. Now, I don't really think, well, we won't even go there. I don't think that this is going to be a good defensive team here for Toronto going forward, but I will say Jakob Pertl, He's been above a 50th percentile defender. Going back to 2021, he was like 98th percentile defender in the NBA. A lot of the sample size this season has been accumulated without him there, which leads me to, as I was running through numbers, and put him in as the defender, the primary defender. I don't do that for everybody. I do it for centers quite frequently because they're not as involved when it comes down to like back to the basket. How does a center do against another center? Rebounding rate. Do they gobble him up like an Andre Drummond. He's not a good basketball player, but he's proven to rebound a lot better than the opposing center on the other side. That's kind of what I'm seeing here for Alperin Shangun. He is going to be the focal point of this offense. He has been all season long, but even more so, Fred Van Vliet on the shelf. This left deductor strain is going to keep him out another four, five, maybe even six games here. Take him well past this all-star break. So uh, Amon Thompson, you're going to see him play 32, 34 minutes. Looked pretty good there for Houston. Uh, again, the Thompson brothers, they're really going to hopefully be showing out here in the second half of this season. Don't have anything to add there. We're going to take an under, though. And I don't throw a lot of unders out there, but I don't think a lot is going to change here on this Houston team. I don't think we get any unexpected news. And I do think this will close around 23 and a half, considering Toronto not exactly up in pace. Again, the defensive rating has been horrible. But with Jakob Pertl there in the middle, 
I like the under of 24 and a half points for Alpin Shankun. I'm going to be firing that early. It is minus 105 on DK. Again, a little bit inside of that minus 110 number. That's good enough for me to be putting it on the card on this six gamer. Charlotte and Milwaukee. Milwaukee going to be on a back-to-back here in this spot. And Charlotte kept Miles Bridges. Got rid of P.J. Washington. P.J. Washed Uppington. <laughs> Boo. Boo, says producer Jacob. It's okay. Nobody cares. Well, actually, I care. I care about your feelings, but you don't care about mine. Neither does YouTube. Anywho, let's continue on our merry way here. It's an interesting spot here. Milwaukee on the back-to-back. Damian Lillard sat out on Thursday. What happens here Friday? Again, why they ended up just at home here? I I don't understand what's going on here with Damian Lillard, why he's been struggling so much, but You don't need him against Charlotte here. You could play anybody else, but it's just a question of who's going to have to play point guard because right now you got Malik Beasley out there just running around like a chicken with his head cut off in this first half. They started Jay Crowder. They do have Brooke Lopez there. Giannis can handle the basketball, obviously, but then Pat Connaughton did get dinged up here. They're waiting on the Patrick Beverly trade to be official. We'll see if that ends up getting through and he can suit up tomorrow. Doubtful day after, but we'll find out. As for Charlotte, they ship off P.J. Washington. They keep Miles Bridges. They're really going to try hard to sign him in the offseason. It's the sound of it from his agent. What a time to be alive. But Leaky Black, I expect to be starting for this team going forward. I doubt they go to the Ish Smith scuff. Having a veteran just sitting there chilling, not doing a whole heck of a lot. They did end up getting Grant Williams, Trey Mann, Seth Curry, uh, Misich as well from OKC. Lots of pieces that could end up being just complete unknowns here for Charlotte and what these minutes can be. I think tomorrow they'll still be shorthanded. So an interesting spot to potentially, potentially dive into, um, you know, some player props and possibly be on some overs early when those numbers open, because we know Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges, they gonna play lots of minutes and they go and chuck in a lot of these spots. But I like the over 241. You work through the defensive rating of both of these teams over at Ducks and Threes. Well, let me just say, it isn't very good. Charlotte dead last in adjusted defensive rating and Milwaukee down at 18th. You can't win an NBA title being 18th in adjusted defensive rating in the year of our Lord 2024. It's just not a thing you can do. So Milwaukee got to shore that up. But in the meantime, let's get some points on the board. That'd be great. Still playing up in pace or Milwaukee third in the Neo association in that department of Charlotte. Yeah, they're down to 20th because no LaMelo ball. He'll be out yet again, but no Gordon Hayward there. No P.J. Washington there. It's going to be an interesting... It's going to be a terrible team to watch. Let's be serious. Let's also be serious. This is an unbelievable deal over at Bet365. Friends, if you are in Arizona, it just went live. Bet365 is now officially in your state. One of the most reputable sports books worldwide. Yes, worldwide. Prestige, worldwide, wide, wide. Arizona, Colorado, Iowa, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana, New Jersey, Ohio, and Virginia. You can all take advantage of this offer in the meantime. Bet five, get $150 when you sign up at the link below. Again, it is as simple as going to the link down there, taking a minute, signing up at Bet365, depositing $5, betting $5, and getting $150 back in bonus bets the link is down there take advantage of it before the super bowl you want some extra some some extra bonus bets do it right now take advantage of it friends only for 21 and over 18 and over in kentucky if you have a gambling problem please call 1-800-GAMBLER back to the picks we go the denver nuggets they are yet to play basketball about a half an hour away from playing basketball in los angeles they're going to be taking on sacramento hang up to wine country well actually it's wine country adjacent you know if you've been to sacramento wine country anyway denver who plays on the back-to-back contavious caldwell pope not going to be playing basketball tonight for denver thought that was a pretty wild run out here but jamal murray ended up talking about him on lindy's pick'em locks there over on tiktok if you guys want to fire that up at lindy's locks just look it up posting all of the pick'em slips posting everything every single day for that in the prize pick streets going to be in the DraftKings pick six streets and the underdog streets Really good streets to be a part of. And hey, we have the fantasy optimizers for those over at Odd Shopper as well. But back to this place specifically, we know Denver is very, very good. Jokic on a back-to-back, you would really, really like that out there going up against Sabonis. But uh, in the meantime, I mean, Denver didn't go and do anything that they needed to do at the deadline. They just stood pat because the West is pretty wide open. They won a title last year and 
well, need everybody healthy like most teams do. As for Sacramento, just an embarrassment, an absolute joke, the way that they lost to the Detroit AAA team. Yeah. They get rid of Killian Hayes the next day after he goes out and torches you. And I took his under and it's like, Detroit is just abysmal. They need to be relegated. We need relegations similar to the Premier League over for soccer in London. Because you know what? This is getting re gosh darn ridiculous. That's for sure. And yet, you know I don't like to bet Sacramento. You know that this is an enjoyable thing. But Denver's on the back-to-back -back here. I'm not positive you get Jamal Murray here on the back-to-back. -back. I know he's been playing more of these recently, but leading into the All-Star break, got another week or so, it is just one of those spots you want to be a little bit trepidatious with minutes for him, for Aaron Gordon, and yes, KCP getting a maintenance day here on Thursday. We'll see if he ends up playing Friday, but that's a defender you want out there chasing around De'Aaron Fox, who's been playing awful, by the way, and Mr. Malik Monk, who's been you know playing good for like two days, but... Two days does not a basketball player make. I feel disturbed that I am actually looking at the Sacramento money line. I'm also going to look at Demonis Sabonis triple double because over the last month, his assist rate is through the absolute moon. Whereas nobody else on the Sacramento team is really doing anything in that department. In terms of rebounding rate, the guy is a 33% defensive rebounder percentage, a 10% offensive rebound percentage. Those are two of the better marks in the entire NBA as such, one of the better rebounders. So the double-double comes down to the assist rate. 33.5% on the season, but a little bit higher here, even playing alongside Fox recently. Think a little sprinkle on the Sabonis triple-double. Now, Ben Simmons, thanks for that, bro. Really, really appreciate that. But again, hopefully you just put like a quarter unit on it because, well, I'm watching him being an idiot right now. We reached the end of our boarding walk with a lock. It's going to be the New Orleans Pelicans taking on the Los Angeles Lakers. We're talking about one-point dogs are the Pelicans. And this Lakers team decided they were going to pack it in for the year. Now, I don't completely blame them. I mean, obviously, it would have been nice for them at the beginning of the year to turn Russell into something else that fit this team better. But I understand that the, the, the word on the street is that Russell's been playing too good for them to deny him having an opportunity to make another run back to the Western Conference Finals, to which I say, who cares about last year? You're trying to win this year. And his defensive marks, 14th percentile defender is D'Angelo Russell. You got Austin Reeves, second percentile defender. These are not the kind of numbers that are going to go out and win you playoff series against teams like, I don't know, the team on the other side of this one. Yes, LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Probably the two best basketball players playing in this game. That shouldn't surprise anybody, but where do you put the next three, four, five, six, seven players? I put them all on the Pelican side because you have players even like a Herb Jones, two-way player that does everything on the defensive end, can guard multiple positions, has been a 98th percentile defender as recently as last season. He's only been in the in the in the league three years, but you got Brandon Ingram, CJ McCollum, and of course, Zion Williamson, that I would put as the next three best players in this game and have been playing at such a high level that it is hard to really look at them and what they did against the Clippers and not be impressed enough by it. Got the off day on the in-between of these games, and now you're getting a Lakers team that will be on the back-to-back, -back. could be sitting LeBron or Mr. Anthony Davis. They're facing Denver here in about T-minus 25 minutes. And there's just no way that I'm not getting an early position in here on the Pelican side of things. I get a free point basically here. We're talking minus 105 on that side of things if you want to go to the money line. But I'm happy to take the push on the one. So what? whatever. This is something that will move drastically if you get one of LeBron or Mr. Anthony Davis sitting out. And of course, the Zion thing is always worth noting. But he's played through these Q tags a lot lately and... Well, this is the first time we haven't had him with the Q tag there. We have Jonas Valanciunas news to pay attention to, but Larry Nance, he'll have revenge in his heart, although I don't care about stuff like that. Just saying that Valanciunas defensively is so bad that anything is an improvement. Anywho, Pelicans are going to roll in this one, and I would like to jump on the money line side of things. Again, maybe take the free point. New Orleans Pelicans, plus one or money line, money line or plus one. I really don't care. Again, plus one is kind of where I'm gearing towards purely because feels like a free-ish point here for five cents. But anyway, New Orleans Pelicans money lock. Money lock. Ooh, I like that. We're going to keep that. 
And that does it for another edition of Liddy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Go to that comment section below. Let me know if you were able to follow me over on X and get on that Tyrese Halliburton play that I jammed to the moon. Largest play of the season there in the premium Discord. I know everybody there was happy with it. Not so happy about Ben Simmons and the fact that he is a dumb dumb, but whatever. Such is life. You don't win them all. And again, it's not about winning them all. It's about positive expected value. Being able to look across multiple sports books and find the best lines every single day. At places like Bet365, where they're giving you $150 in bets, uh, in bet credits, excuse me, when you bet $5 or more over at their lovely site. Again, 21 and over. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1 800 Gambler. Another week in the books. It's Super Bowl weekend, friends. NFL Lindy's coming on the pipeline. Be on the lookout for that. Until next week, uh, thank you, producer Jacob. Per usual, another one in the books. I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets on Friday. <laughs>